So let's look at antidepressant agents. So if you are depressed, what type of drugs can we use? Well, there's actually this um, therapy. It's called the ECT. And what this does is um, you kind of put these uh, wires and patches on your uh, forehead, and it's supposed to help with uh, depression. And this is not given to every single person who has depression. It's only reserved for those people who cannot take antidepressants. And so this is actually um, a very effective method of and fast method of uh, treating depression. There's other medications called SSRIs, SNRIs, TCAs, and we'll, we're looking at um, all of these. So the first uh, type or category of medication that's good for depression is called SSRIs, which is known as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. I know it's a, it's a mouthful, but it's actually really simple. So it says reuptake inhibitors. What does that really mean? What it means is that it inhibits the reuptake of serotonin. So serotonin, the... Um, the shortened version of it is 5-HT. I know it sounds really weird, but that's the uh, shortened version for a serotonin. And so, you know how I always said that dopamine is great because it makes you feel good? Well, so does serotonin. Serotonin also makes you feel good. And so the way it works is in our brain, we have neurons, and the neuron releases this um, serotonin, which is a neurotransmitter. It releases serotonin, and it and then the serotonin goes to the postsynaptic neuron and it goes away. When we have serotonin in this area here and the synapse over here, that's amazing because we feel a really, a re we feel really good when serotonin is over here. So what does this medication do? Well, this medication is a reuptake inhibitor. What that means is typically what happens is when serotonin gets released here, yes, some of them go to the postsynaptic uh, neuron and gets goes out but some of them so some of the serotonin they actually go back so they get reuptake so they actually go back into the presynaptic neuron and it just goes back and gets stored there so what this drug does is it blocks the reuptake it blocks this area so serotonin cannot go back up we want serotonin to hang out over here because that makes us feel uh, better right so the reuptake is that Sometimes serotonin, they, actually most of the time, the remaining serotonin goes back up and gets stored there. But what this drug does is it prevents it from going back up. And when it prevents it from getting reuptake, of when it prevents it from going back up, the serotonin is forced to hang out in this area. And when it hangs out in this synapse area, we feel a lot better. Okay, so that's what the SSRIs do. They block the reabsorption of serotonin. They block serotonin from going back up because we want serotonin to hang out in this area. So um, there are obviously side effects to this drug, right? They could be GI, so stomach upset. They, there is a lot of oral side effects, like dry mouth, taste changes, your tongue could get red and inflamed, your salivary gland could get enlarged. You could, interestingly enough, you could either have a dry mouth or you could either salivate a lot more, so it's opposite effects. So it just depends on you know the person. So the most common one is Prozac. This is something that you may have heard of, and this is an example of an SSRI. Then we have serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, known as SNRIs. And it works the same way. You know how I said in this one that serotonin is hanging out in this area? Well, with um, this medication over here, norepinephrine is hanging out in this area. And again, norepinephrine is another neurotransmitter that makes us feel good. And so what it does is it blocks the norepinephrine from going back. From, re from going through that reuptake. So it inhibits, it inhibits it from going back up. And that's good because we want norepinephrine to stay here to make us feel better. So this is a different type of drug that's helpful for depression. And then we have the TCAs or the tricyclic antidepressants. And it, um, the way it works is it blocks both serotonin and norepinephrine to varying degrees. So it blocks both. It blocks the serotonin, which is the blue. It blocks the norepinephrine from going back up. So we see more serotonin and more um, norepinephrine in this area, which is great. This is no long, it's not really the first type of line of therapy. We usually use the other types of medications like the S, um, 
SSRIs or the SNRIs, but if we have to, if they're not responsive to the other um, drugs, then they will prescribe the TCAs. And this is usually um, reserved for people who have moderate to severe depression. They do have uh, quite a few side effects. Um, so cardiac toxicity, so that means your heart could get damaged, um, the brain could get affected, central nervous system, the brain could uh, slow down. So there are some side effects, the sedation. Sedation is a really big one because all of the TCAs cause a lot of sedation. The last drug we'll look at is called MAOIS, so monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Um, this is a rare drug, but it is usually the last resort. So if none of these drugs, if the SSRIs didn't work, if the SNRIs didn't work, if the TCAs didn't work, then the doctor will prescribe this type of drug. But this type of drug has a lot of side effects, so we try not to, doctors try not to prescribe it unless they absolutely have to. And if they overdose on it, then it's a, it's pretty bad. They could It could be fatal. There's a lot of uh, food prohibitions, so they can't have cheese, they can't have wine, they can't have pickled food, so there's a lot of food restrictions that they need to know. But remember, it's a last resort. Um, so usually they'll prescribe other drugs, and if none of them work, then they'll prescribe this drug. There are other types of medications like Prupion, um, but the reason why we try to stay away from this medication is because a lot of people have said they've had experienced seizures, and so that's not good, right? So, so they try not to. It's, this actually, this medication has been off the market, then on the market, then off the market, so it, it is because of the seizure. Okay, so there's other medications like this one that is very, very sedative, so it makes you very tired. Right? So there's many other types of medications that are out there. One important, important thing to note is that all antidepressants will have a black box warning. We'll have a warning on the on the uh, bottle that says, uh, you know, that they they could become suicidal. And so, one of the questions that you might be asked is that, or usually doctors and nurses, this is a test question for them, is they'll say that um, you, they might have someone who has depression and they come in and then they get prescribed these medications, and when they get prescribed these medications, they feel a lot better, obviously. So then the question might be, well, can we release them from the hospital? Can we re let them go? And the answer is no. Even though they feel better, we really need to keep a careful eye. And the reason why is because when they feel better, this is now, this is when they'll now have energy to do suicide. This is now when they'll have energy to kill themselves. Before, when they were depressed, they had no energy. But now that they're feeling better, they might now have more energy to do something about it, to go and kill themselves, right? So this, now that they're feeling better, they might become even more suicidal. So we really need to keep a close eye on them when they're on the antidepressant. There's something called bipolar depression, and we looked at this um, earlier where they feel really good, they have this extreme high, and then they get extremely depressed. So two ends, right? And so there are drugs like um, lithium is what we use. This is a drug of choice used for people who have bipolar depression. But of course, lithium has side effects such as these. And if you overdose, it, it's not good. In the last chapter, we looked at anti-epileptic um, drugs. So when people have seizures, there are these types of drugs that are prescribed to them. Remember that these type of drugs that are, yes, they are used for anti-epileptic um, for epilepsy but they could also be used for treating bipolar depression. So when someone is prescribed this drug, we need to ask them, is it for epilepsy, is it for seizures, or is it for depression? Because knowing that can help us um, you know, treat them better. Because let's say they're taking this medication for epilepsy, for seizures, then we have to ask them, well, when was your last seizure? We have to be careful with lights, because when we shine light on them, it could trigger a seizure. But if it's used for depression, then we know not to worry as much, right? So knowing why they're taking these drugs is very important. Okay, thank you so much for listening.